Usually mealworms are bought from the pet store for other animals to eat, but I got some to feed my Venus flytrap. And when I opened the little container where the wormies lived, I immediately thought to myself, okay, I know I'm gonna feed my plant a few of these, but it can't possibly eat all of them. And I wonder what would happen if I were to keep these little guys in a bug box and feed them. Would they grow? What would they even turn into? And it was in that moment that I had a plan. I opened the container up, revealed the bugs, and might I add, it felt like bugs were crawling under my skin. It was really gross. I wasn't used to handling bugs that looked like little monsters. But I stuck to the plan and added some oats for their bedding, some apples for them to eat real good, and then did the dirty deed. Poured them inside the bug box, and I saw one bug in there that initially I thought was dead, but soon realized that this bug had already transformed into the next stage of its life. And then I realized that this was gonna be good. I had quite frankly never seen anything like this in my life. I had assisted butterflies hatching before, even ladybugs and Mexican jumping beans, but this? This was different and it was grosser. And I was soon gonna learn the inevitability of what happens when you do in fact make the odd choice of putting mealworms in a bug box to transform into their next stage of life or stages. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves here because after I added the mealworms into their new home, I closed the top, which by the way, if you're as crazy as I am and wanna do this at home, you can find all the things I used, like the little bug box in my Amazon shop. But anywho, I brought the box inside placed it in a corner and proceeded to wait. I had no idea how slow or fast this process was gonna be but finally that first night passed and I'm telling you the truth when I say that I could barely sleep that night I dreamt of the bugs somehow escaping and infiltrating my house and then I wasn't able to get rid of them and my entire bedroom filled with mealworms but when I woke up from my slumber I went down the stairs and realized that it was only just a dream we were in the clear and it was also at this point where I was kind of regretting doing this because my skin was crawling but I stuck to the process and stayed committed because I thought about how much of a magical blessing that nature truly is and remembered that if a caterpillar and a ladybug and a Mexican jumping bean can all transform into beautiful animals in their final stages of life then maybe just maybe would we be surprised and reveal something special so anywho I came down the stairs and went to check on the bug box. They were all still inside and wiggling around back and forth in a weird way. It almost looked like they were doing little worm back flips. So I got the time lapse going and then another day passed. I went to check on that time lapse and saw something insane. Now remember in the beginning when I told you one of these worms had already transformed into one of the next stages of its life? Well, I began to see in real time how that actually took place. The little worm somehow transformed from the browny beige worm they were to a white, pearly, slightly smaller and more wrinkly version of that worm. But it was weird because I couldn't really see the eyes very well. So again, I thought it was dead or something, but then I realized that just like a caterpillar morphs its body into a chrysalis so they can emerge as a butterfly, similarly to the mealworm, they go from being a little worm to transitioning into the pupil form. And that means that their bodies begin to break down and reorganize internally. The larval wormy tissues are gradually dissolved and transformed into more of the adult structures. And somehow, by the gift of nature, the larval wormy skin splits open and the pupa emerges and this can take anywhere from a few hours to a couple of days. But I got it all on time lapse and as I played it back and a couple more days passed, it was such an amazing thing to witness. Again, I had never seen anything like it before. The new emerged white cream colored pupa are soft and they lack the hard exoskeleton so they appear less defined and it's during this stage where in nature they're pretty vulnerable to predators eating them and other environmental conditions like snow because their exoskeleton hasn't hardened yet. But anywho, as the days passed, the worms continued to wiggle, my skin continued to crawl, and I continued to witness the first stage of the metamorphosis of this mealworm. And boy, was I oddly excited to see what was going to happen next. Because just a few days later, a majority of those worms had transformed into these soft little white things that continue to turn their bodies back and forth, which I guess is what helps them actually dissolve their inner tissues and transform. 
There was a weird worm skin kind of thing, kind of like how a snake sheds its skin that was left over in the bug box and trust me, I was not touching that. I was nervous that there would be eggs or something and if I touched it, I would transfer those eggs into my home and I did not want to risk these things getting loose in my house. So I just left it as it was and continued to watch and at this point, around 13 or 14 days had passed. So two weeks and I started to notice that over the next few days, the white exoskeleton of these tiny things were beginning to change in color to a darker color and they looked like they were going from a soft thing to a harder thing it almost looked like some sort of bug but my query was in fact confirmed because the next morning I woke up to a literal bug in the enclosure and I was very confused so I started watching the time-lapse back and revealed something absolutely spectacularly grossly insane this little bug with a white creamy body and a darker head it was absolutely disgusting but really cool all at the same time and I learned that this was actually a process called eclosion where the pupil case splits allowing the adult version of the metamorphosis to enter the earth through the once white creamy exoskeleton. Now as some time passed I went to check on the enclosure to see that the white body of that bug had hardened a bit and changed in color. It got pretty dark like a dark brown almost black and soon I realized that this happened because initially the emerging bug is soft and pliable and it actually takes five to ten hours for the new exoskeleton of this bug to fully harden and once it hardens it begins to seek food and eventually mate and continue the life cycle so I guess I didn't need those apples in there initially I'm not too sure if the worms even eat that but the bugs definitely do and soon before I knew it all of these little things started transforming into bugs and it was in this moment that I realized that I may have a problem because I don't want 300 bugs in this enclosure I don't even know if they can climb or fly and I don't know how they reproduce so what happens once they all hatch and then they mate and then they lay eggs and then we have a huge amount of bugs that I cannot control and you can't just let them free in a field somewhere because for one these bugs are actually called darkling beetles so we had beetles like what gross but cool and for two they are apparently actually an invasive species so depending on the location specifically where I am in Canada mealworms aren't actually native so releasing them can actually disrupt local ecosystems and outcompete the native species, plus they could harm different plants and fauna and flora. So in that moment, I knew that I would have to find a way to dispose of these things properly because Venus flytrap plants don't eat beetles and I don't have a reptile, I just have my little guy raff raff. So I knew I was gonna have to figure that out, but that was the least of my worries currently because I was actually kind of enjoying watching them all transform and sort of excited in a weird way to see what would happen next after the bugs all transformed and whether or not that was in fact their final stage of metamorphosis or not. Each bug continued to transform and by now it had been about 21 days, so three weeks and most of the bugs were dark in color running around the little enclosure, thank God they didn't fly or climb. Thankfully they're not able to and some Sometimes they would even get stuck on their back like this and it would take them a while to figure out how to flip over. So during this time they actually became pretty vulnerable and I'm not sure if you can guess what happened next. But other bugs seemed to find their way over to the bugs stuck and climbed on top of them and I guess did the deed. And eventually I woke up in the morning to find that most of the bugs were on top of each other having a real nice swinging party. I wanted nothing and everything to do with it. And I assumed that they would be hungry after that. So I prepared some more pieces of apples, added them to the enclosure and watched them chow down on the juiciness of the fruit. And soon it had been over a month and I was ready to get rid of these things because I had had enough of the party. So I had an idea. I called up my friend Angel because she has a lizard and her lizard is named Lenny and he is very cute. And I remembered one time in university, she had told me that her dad likes to farm the mealworms and turn them purposely into beetles so that they can continue to procreate and lay eggs that hatch into little larvae and then they can continue to feed Lenny so they didn't have to keep buying them from the store. And I thought, well, maybe this would be perfect for little Lenny. So she in fact agreed and so I got the mealworms ready in a container, did my best to clean out the enclosure. So she got all of them, even the beetles, and her and her dad met me to pick up the package. 
much. But I realized I did leave some oats in the enclosure because I got a bit lazy to clean it out, not gonna lie, but I didn't really think much of it initially. And after she left, about another month passed and one morning I woke up and I was eating strawberries and I had found a little green bug on it. So I was like, wow, it is my lucky day. And you know exactly what I had to do, I had to grow it. So you know what I did, I got my bug box back out. Happy that it already had oats in it from before. I added a little green bug into the enclosure and before I closed the lid, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. A worm? Is that a mealworm? Oh boy. I made a mistake because I realized that there must have been leftover eggs in there from the beetle that had hatched during the time from when I gave the beetles to my friend Angel to when I found the little green bug on my strawberry. And at that point I was like, oh no, not again. What am I gonna do? So, as I thought to myself what to do about it, Angel had pinged me with some videos of Lenny eating his freshly bred mealworms and he was so happy and it was so cute and I was like, okay, when in doubt, I'll just tell Angel to come pick up this entire enclosure to get rid of them entirely. But then I had a thought, we've got tiny mealworms and initially I had bought these things to feed to my Venus flytrap, but I realized in the midst of it all, I never even got a chance to do that and my Venus was probably very mad at me. So you know exactly what I did next. I fed the worm to my Venus flytrap and had a moment of panic when I saw the worm trying to escape from the left hand corner of the mouth of the plant that little f and I thought to myself that I am never going to the pet store ever again unless it's for Rafi or unless it's to grow hornworms. 